Yesterday, I saw my doctor for the last time. For the final examination, she ran her hands along the healed scars from expert slicing that rid my body of disease and made me, as I requested, not necessarily beautiful, but interesting. She then gave me the all clear to move on with my life. I mean, there's still odds and ends to take care of, monitoring my bone health while on medication that's no good for bones, getting fitted for a sleeve to keep lymphedema at bay, and considering which other body parts might need prophylactic removal, as I never, ever, ever again want to hear the words, you have cancer. Ugh. Nevertheless, she says, you are done. You're listening to Blissful Hiker Podcast. I'm Allison Young, the solo, female, middle-aged, titanium-reinforced, long-distance backpacker and cancer thriver, Blissful Hiker. This podcast is a series of personal essays that I call audio narratives. They couple storytelling, found sound, and my own flute playing, and I explore a journey of self-discovery where I share the sometimes unglamorous but vital truth about empowerment. We're badass people, and we don't need permission to blaze our own trails in this journey we call life. If you enjoy these podcasts, you can support them through Patreon. There's a link to Patreon in the show notes or at blissfulhikerpodcast.com. There's so much joy and release in this moment. I mean, not just the whirlwind that was the last four months, anxiety and loss of control, but gratitude for what this surgeon did for me from the first moment we met and discussed my crappy options. When I gather myself together to say goodbye, she tells me she'll be retiring this year. We're the same age, so I'm a little surprised. But I assume there must be a lot of emotional burnout dealing with cancer all the time and weepy patients like me. But burnout is not the reason my surgeon's retiring. She tells me she had a wake-up call to do all the things she wants to do while she's still healthy enough to do them. And that call came when her best friend developed Alzheimer's. At this point, she's declined so much she can't be left alone. Oh, imagine that. One of my friends really likes the way that I'm managing this mess of cancer by not just racing back to normalcy, but rather discovering what normal means to me now. He calls me a (laughs) surthriver. I love that. You know, you're a thriver and a survivor, a (laughs) surthriver. Surthrivers aren't immune to fear. We know insecurity, and we know that it's just part of life, and we use that knowledge to direct our actions. All religions and great thinkers understand that. The Buddhists use Zen. The Stoics used equanimity. And St. Paul told the early Christians to rejoice, to trust God, and to not worry about anything. Think about that for a second. Not only does Paul tell us to do something that feels unnatural when the chips are down, to not worry about anything— But at the same time, he suggests that we should be happy about it. In fact, he says it twice for emphasis. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Have no anxiety in anything. But with prayers and thanksgiving, let your requests be known. It's pretty cool, and it's damn hard to do, especially when we have what economist Russ Roberts calls wild problems— These are problems he describes as untamed, undomesticated, spontaneous, organic, and complex. But no matter what life throws at us, there's room for humility. There's room for prayers. There's room for thanksgiving. There's room for tears, but also for joy and imagination. My doctor exemplifies all that in choosing retirement right now, And when I asked her, what is she going to do first? She replies, go on a hike. Time is running out for me, for all of us. 
and my wake-up call is getting louder every day. But I've reached the terminus of the breast cancer trail. That is a certainty. I'm done. It's time to let this go, to face my future and make the next steps, the ones that put all this awfulness in the rearview mirror, my priority. And for that, I say rejoice. Last summer, when Bob Barker, the longtime host of The Price is Right, died, he was 99 years old. I mentioned it to my neighbor, who responded, I thought he was already dead. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was such a horrible response, but I think we've all been caught saying stuff like that. I just hope that nobody says it about me. I mean, it's hardly worth making it a goal, but wouldn't it be interesting if rather than wondering if we were still alive when we leave this earth— we lived such big lives that people couldn't believe that we were gone. That would be a declaration, a staking of a claim, living deliberately and audaciously. Well, I don't plan to die anytime soon, but I'm going to be as audacious as I dare beginning Monday when I fly to Tucson to pick up a portion of the Arizona Trail that I skipped when I did my through hike two years ago. I'm older now, and I've been beaten up and bruised, but I'm ready to return to the low desert and hopefully lots of wildflowers. Maybe this breast cancer detour will send me on better paths and richer routes and teach me to live with even more daring and zest and energy and unstoppable curiosity. To quote T.S. Eliot, we shall not cease from exploration, and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive at the place where we started and know it for the first time. Blissful Hiker Podcast is on all podcast platforms, and thanks for listening and coming along with me on this journey. I'd love to know where you're listening from. You can always drop me a line anytime at blissfulhikerpodcast.com. I'm heading to trail again, as I mentioned, the Arizona Trail, and I'll take a pause from podcasting. But there are 26 podcast episodes from Arizona, and you can check them out on the website, blisslehikerpodcast.com, or through your favorite podcast platform. So I'll be on trail. Follow along if you want. Keep in touch. But until we meet again, kia kaha and happy trails. Mm-hmm.